Welcome back to The Great Experience by John Bat 426 here on YouTube. I'm so glad to see you. I can't really see you, but if you watch it, my heart sees you. Okay? Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that one, okay? If you've liked what you've seen so far, hit the like button. Share the video if it's just such an overwhelming urge inside of you like everyone I know has to see this. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell for notifications. All. Oh. Not personalized or whatever the last one is, but all. So every time a new video is dropped, you will know about it second and I will know about it first. And I have a lot of energy today because it feels like I haven't recorded a lot of videos lately. Because, I mean, when I first started the channel, I was just kind of banging them out like three a day. And I was doing Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturday and Sunday. But I'm kind of scaling it back a little bit, maybe like one or two short ones per day just so I can sort of save my brain so I don't have you know do everything all at once because I don't want to get burnt out because this channel just started and um, I don't see burnout anywhere so far but I want to make sure that it stays in a, the distance okay so that's why I don't do it every day but anyway I said all that just to say thank you for coming back thank you for letting your friends know thank you for letting your enemies know thank you for letting old acquaintances new acquaintances people you haven't even met yet, met yet know about the great expanse by John Bat 426 We've got some Blue Beetle news. Yep, we're going to the DC EU, the DC Comics Extended Universe, or Expanded Universe, one of those. And it's from Cosmic, wait, CBR, let's see. Uh, CBR, CBR.com, maybe it stands for something. But report, Blue Beetle's lengthy DC EU runtime is second only to the Snyder Cut. You heard me, the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut is four hours long. Four hours that went quickly for me, quickly for my nephews and my sister. My sister isn't even as invested in superheroes as she is, as I am, excuse me. But she said that was four hours. It went by quick because there was a lot going on. There was necessary attention to necessary characters, okay? But if it's second only to Zack Snyder's, four hour runtime. I cannot wait to see this because I hope that they do something that I thought Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings should have done, which I gave a thumbs up. I gave it a B plus. I uh, reviewed it right here on The Great Experience by John Bat 426 But I heard somewhere that it's going to be in Spanish and I think that will really nail it. I thought Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings should have been done in Chinese with English subtitles. And I read in the report, I, I think it was, I didn't read the report. I should have done that, done my due diligence. And I think Susan Sarandon, who's in the movie, said, I think it was Susan Sarandon. The actress will appear here. Yeah. She said that it is going to be in Spanish, which I think will really make it something of its own. Okay. So let's get right into the article. Blue Beetle's reported runtime seemingly makes it the second longest DCEU film behind the Snyder Cut and the longest to earn a theatrical release. All right. So... Blue Beetle is shaping up to be one of the longest entries in the DC Extended Universe. It's extended, not expanded, so I was correct. <laughs> Big Screen Leaks, BSL, shared the news on Twitter claiming that the current cut of Blue Beetle sits around 2 hours and 45 minutes. If it's done correctly, it will fly past because of just the images of what Blue Beetle will look like, of what uh, the Scarab will be able to do. I think it's going to be great. And it's set for August of 2023, but I don't think it's going to be done in August. I'm hoping it will, but with everything going on with Warner Brothers Discovery and hopefully Ezra Miller doesn't do anything else weird to push the flash back from June 23rd, but hopefully he can stay in that slot because that's very close. Uh, August release is very close to the June 23rd release for uh, the flash. Let me get back to the article. Okay. The insider also mentions that the film's massive runtime is subject to change as it is still in post-production. As it stands, Blue Beetle's length is second only to Zack Snyder's Justice League, we know that, which clocked in at four hours and two minutes, and the longest of any DCEU project released in theaters. Zack Snyder's Justice League was not released in theaters. It was exclusively released on HBO Max. Blue Beetle's supersized length may be surprising to some fans, considering Warner Brothers, which had not yet merged with Discovery, originally conceived the film as a straight-to-streaming feature for HBO Max in 2018. Thankfully, it didn't do that. The studio gave the project a theatrical release in December 2021 before the cameras even started rolling. Principal photography began in May 2022 and, nearly, and lasted nearly two months, finishing in July. So that, that's, that's a good amount of time to uh, film it. Following several canceled projects at HBO Max, including Batgirl, 
Many wondered if Blue Beetle would soon follow suit. However, just days after Batgirl's termination, Warner Brothers Discovery confirmed Blue Beetle was still moving forward and aiming for a theatrical release. Good job, Warner Brothers Discovery. Director Angel Manuel Soto of Charm City Kings recently said the film has the studio's full support. Produced by John Ricard, Peacemaker, and written by Gareth Dunnett Alcocer, Miss Bala, Blue Beetle stars Zolo Maradueña as J Jaime Reyes, a high school student who becomes the titular superhero after discovering an alien artifact. The Cobra Kai star is joined by Bruna Marque Marquezine, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing these names, George Lopez, Raul Trujillo, and several others. Susan Sarandon, I was correct, plays Victoria Cord, the film's central antagonist, having taken over, taken over the role from Sharon Stone in April 2022. We're going to chew the fat, okay, on that one. Blue Beetle star described the DC film as an expensive experiment. Little is known about Victoria Cord, who was created solely for the Blue Beetle film. Though the character shares the same last name as Ted Cord, the second Blue Beetle and owner of the research and development company Cord Industries in the DC Universe. Sarandon recently revealed that Victoria represents the white military industrial complex, suggesting she will be a weapons contractor with ties to Cord Industries. Blue Beetle is not only the first Latino-led superhero film for Warner Brothers Discovery in the DCEU, but also for the film industry as a whole. The cast is comprised almost exclusively of Latin performers and will feature subtitles during scenes spoken in Spanish. In September, Maradona said he is hopeful the film will advance representation and increase opportunities for Latino actors to play authentic big screen heroes. Blue Beetle hits theaters on August 18th, 2023. Great article, Blue Beetle is a very intriguing character. And it says that certain scenes will be done in Spanish. I wish the whole movie would be done in Spanish, but maybe that just doesn't work right. I don't produce films, so I don't really know what works. But uh, let's go back to Victoria Cord. Now, Cord immediately stood out. Obviously, she, she must be Ted Cord's estranged wife or widow. And there, there are a lot of ways you, you can go with that. Maybe she saw how Ted Cord responded to the, to the Scarab and... Maybe his death, Ted Cord, is, is one of those characters that die, dies, and stays dead. I think Dan Garrett is actually still alive, the previous Blue Beetle, but Ted Cord is killed. And it'll be interesting to, interesting to see where they go with that. It really will. So um, it says Sarandon recently revealed that Victoria represents the white military industrial complex. Okay, let, let me let me just say this right now. Okay. Um it's getting a little old that every villain has to be white. It's like, come on, like, the white military industrial complex, like, we see that in The Dark Knight Rises, they opted for Bane to be a white character rather than a Latino character, because it's like, well, that's the enemy we know. I'm tired of them saddling just and I'm sorry I'm at a loss for words I want to make sure I say this carefully I'm, I'm sort of tired of the, the blame the white man thing I, I'm going to just say it just like that I'm, I'm kind of tired of the blame the white man the white man is always the enemy kind of thing but enough okay Let, let's, let's get some creative storytelling for our villains everything doesn't have to reflect the real world this is a comic book film it should be kind of a departure, a suspension of disbelief. But there still should be some sort of correlation to what's going on so that it's relatable. But let's get a little more creative with our storytelling with our villains, okay? Let's not just say, well, this is the white devil that we know. I think they did the same thing with Star Trek Into Darkness. Like Khan is an Indian Asian character originally in Space Seed in Star Trek, the original series, and in The Wrath of Khan. But in Into Darkness, he's played by Benedict Cumberbatch masterfully okay but then they they say well this is the enemy that we know and, and it's like whoa he's a white guy so we know he's an enemy let's chill with it all right we know how this world functions okay L let's have a little bit of a departure okay and so just always saddling oh yeah he's white so he's got to be a bad guy no he doesn't all right so let's not make everything racist everything does not have to be racist Everything doesn't have to be about institutional racism. Let's tell more broad stories, okay? We, 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 can, we can do better, okay? But this is still interesting. As I said, the Victoria Cord element of it, you know, 
And as I said, they can kind of spin the story however they want. You know, maybe she's the widow of Ted Kord. She saw what the Scarab did to him and she sort of blames Jaime Reyes and the Scarab itself for her husband's death. And it's the only way she knows how to fight. I mean, because the Reach can take over an entire planet with one Scarab. One Scarab can take over the world. So if she has knowledge of this, maybe there's pillow talk with her and Ted. He's like, you know, that I can really sort of take over the world. And she probably like, okay, honey. Lay your head on my chest and let's turn the lights out. Beep, you know, <laughs> but anyway, uh, this looks interesting. And Susan Sarandon is a masterful actress. Master. All right. Thelma and Louise. I uh, can't remember the other one. Uh, the Client, I think it was. Yeah, Susan Sarandon was in. And Susan Sarandon is awesome. So I can't wait to see her in this. I do not know who Zolo Maradwenia is. I have never seen anything he's ever been in. But I'm looking forward to Blue Beetle. I really am. What do you think about it? What did you think of the video? Click like if you liked it. Click dislike if you disliked it. Share it. Subscribe to the channel. Let's make the great experience by John Bat 426 Expand for your entertainment and for my joy. All right. Peace.